Richard, and um, the discussion now we're going to have is about the tax-based definition for income received in advance in terms of IAS 12, and you'll need this for your calculation of deferred tax. So um, first of all, basic concepts. Um, sometimes the accounting treatment for income differs to the tax treatment. So we will have a carrying amount of something called income received in advance, which there's going to result in future outflows. In essence, it's a liability, but the normal tax-based definition for liabilities does not apply because of the differences in the tax treatment of income received in advance versus obligations being settled in cash. So the carrying amount will result in future outflows, which will either be the repayment of the income received in advance, or alternatively, the settlement of your obligation to perform the service, etc. So what we need to understand is that the tax treatment for income received in advance, generally you will get taxed up front when you receive the cash, and therefore you will have future outflows for accounting purposes, which will result in reversals of accounting income or a future tax deduction, which will be a future economic benefit to match that future outflow of obligation being settled. Now, for that purposes, you will recognize a carrying amount today of the deferred tax. Okay, so a little bit theoretical. Let's just have a look at how we work this. So the first thing, and in terms of IS-12, this is consistent. So I need to first identify what are or how the income received in advance will be realized to profit and loss. So just the process we go through from an accounting perspective. The first journal we do, we go debit bank, for instance. So debit bank, 150. The credit will go to income received in advance, which is a financial position account, a liability of 150. So let's say in year one, we are going to recognize one third of that. Let's say, for instance, that that income received in advance will be recognized into revenue over three years as that's when the services will be provided. So I would then go debit income received in advance, financial position, credit revenue, which is a profit and loss account. And let's say that that was 150 times one over three for the current year, 50 rand. So at the end of the day, I'm going to still have an income received in advance on my liabilities, whether current or non-current, of 150 minus 50 being 100. Now, we need to understand that this first question is, how will that income received in advance be realized to profit and loss? Well, that's exactly that second journal. We need to understand when and how. So, in the future, is the income going to be taxable when realized. So in the future, I'm going to have to go, again, debit income received in advance, credit to revenue for the remaining 100. At some point, whether it be over the next two years, whatever. So at that point, when I'm doing that, is that going to be taxable? Let's understand how the tax authority would recognize this. The tax authority would say that very first journal where you go debit bank 150, well, that is when you will have taxable income. The tax authority will generally, not all the time, treat that because earlier of a cool or cash receipt, the cash receipt came first of 150. So for that first journal, we've done no accounting adjustment through profit and loss, remember. So when I do these subsequent accounting adjustments, to clear out the income received in advance, realize that into re revenue in profit and loss, will the tax authority tax me again? No, they won't. They've already taxed me right up front when I received the cash of 150. So my tax base, therefore, will equal to the carrying amount minus the amount not taxable in the future. And whether my question, my answer, to the above question was yes or no, the same formula will be used. Carrying amount minus the amount not taxable in this little example would have been at the end of year one, would have been 100 carrying amount, and that 100 rand would not be taxable in the future again because it was already taxed upfront 
as part of the 150 Rand receipt. Okay, so looking at another little example, just to try and keep this simple but practical, my deferred tax calculation, I have a carrying amount, a tax base that we need to work out. So for that deferred revenue or income received in advance, I had a thousand Rand carrying amount, which represents the future outflows to rep to settle the obligation, whether that future outflow be uh, services provided or repayment of the income received in advance, doesn't matter. So we've got the carrying amount. Now the tax base for this income received in advance will assume that this was taxable, that a thousand income received in advance was taxable upon receipt and that was put into taxable income. So out of carrying amount minus the amount not taxable when realized in the future. So here I've got my carrying amount of a thousand minus the full thousand will not be taxed again, gives me a tax base of zero. Therefore tax base is zero. I now have a temporary difference, okay, of 1000. And in the future, how would this reverse out in my current tax comp? I would have added the thousand into my income received in advance in the current year when I received that money. So I've increased taxable income in the current year. So therefore, when that reverses out in the future, I will have a reduction in future taxable income. Therefore, it will be the same as a deductible or the tax deduction. So it will be a deductible temporary difference in the future, resulting in a deferred tax asset because it will be a future tax saving. And once again, let's assume we're working with 30% here. That means I have a future tax saving of 300 Rand and that conceptually is sound. Again, my little set of rules for income received in advance. Our headings, carrying amount, tax base, temporary difference, deferred tax. If the income received in advance, the income received in advance has a carrying amount that is bigger than the tax base, I will have a deductible temporary difference, which will be a future benefit at a fair tax asset. If the income received in advance, the carrying amount is smaller than the tax base, not very common, but can happen in certain instances, then I will have a taxable temporary difference. Remember I'm talking te taxable temporary difference balance here. Huh? Being a future outflow of cash to pay tax, therefore a deferred tax liability. I hope this has helped. Thank you.